Thanks for tuning in. Okay, so what exactly do I mean by cutting the fat in your ScreenFlow videos? Well, fat in your videos refers to any unnecessary content or dead space in your final production, stuff you don't need. Now, unless you are actually adding it for effect or a specific purpose, you are risking losing your audience with the click of a mouse. Let's face it, we are all in the YouTube generation right now, no matter where you decide to host your video, and viewers are ruthlessly impatient now if you waste their time or if you even hint at wasting their time. No way, it's not gonna work. You need to let your audience know right away that they came here for the right reason and your video is packed with important and flowing content and the exact stuff that they came looking for. They don't want to be watching videos wondering when you are finally going to be getting to the point. So here are five ways to cut the fat in your videos. One, get rid of dead air. Use quick cuts in your timeline to delete all dead air from your original recording. Now, a cut actually has no transition effect. It just goes from one frame in your recording to another. This should be your default transition, if that's what you want to call it, because viewers hate to be tuned into nothingness. See that? It wasn't fun, was it? Now you can actually do this while adding a sense of urgency or even humor to your content. Take a cue from movie trailers. They are outrageously good at cutting because they have to get this story out in such a short amount of time. Yeah, she doesn't even know I exist. There's like 60 people in the village. I mean, you really have to go out of your way to not know that somebody exists. Drag her back to your hut. What if she struggles? Give her a little uh, tap on the head. Women respond to that. I counted like 10 cuts in that short sequence. Okay, so when you are in screen flow in your production mode, get used to using I and O for your in and out points and then command delete for quick cuts of content you know is going to be useless, which you can often see right on your audio track if there's just nothing going on there. Even if it's only two seconds, I like to cut it because two seconds times, for example, 15 of those cuts, that's 30 seconds off the time of your final video. And that is huge in YouTube land. Arithmetic. <laughs> Not only will these edits speed up your entire video, your viewers will know to pay close attention to the content because it's packed with the exact information they came for. So just keep challenging yourself to rock out action-packed videos. Number two, ruthlessly cut out any words, phrases, or sequences that are repetitive, easily assumed, or simply just not needed to get your point across effectively. Now, this one is a little more tricky because it requires you to step back from producer mode and pretend that you are the viewer who is trying to follow along in the steps that you're explaining. So when thinking of cutting or not, just ask yourself, is this really needed to get to the bottom line purpose or lesson? I've looked over some of my own recordings and scrapped massive chunks because I realize my audience will already know this or can figure it out easily. For example, you do not have to show people how to use a browser or how to type in a URL or how to press a download button. That may have been handy information in 2005, not anymore. And I'm not saying everything has to be scripted, but if you do ad lib through your videos, I can virtually guarantee that you have repeated yourself throughout your screencast. Think about this, for every five minutes of your screencast recording, you probably have about one minute of useful content. That's what you have to key into. Think like a Republican and just cut the taxes. Okay, this third tactic is so often ignored, it's actually bizarre. All you have to do is learn how to combine your scripted audio with visuals that help get a point across quicker. Remember, it's video, so you've got to be using images, uh, graphics, colors, photos, and even text to help get a point across more effectively with less verbalizing, that's the key. If you're just gonna be blabbing through your video, you might as well write an article or create an audio podcast. I've seen it over and over again where the screencaster will be showing poorly visible or inadequate visuals while also verbalizing intricate instructions where a simple image or two could have explained perfectly. Just like here where I used both audio and visuals to explain a tactic that could improve a poker player's decision-making process using pros and cons. A simple arrow or image can go a long way to eliminating over-verbalizing. All right, number four, cut out the self-promotion 
or about me fairy tales. Nobody cares. Nobody cares. You know what happens when you say, but first, a little about me. Oh yeah, they're gonna run for their lives. It's a dead giveaway to you loving your video more than anybody else. If your stuff is really good, then they will seek you out and learn more about you through your other videos, comments, articles, even your website about page. Now, if you really need to, during your video, you can add subtle little text notes that give more information about yourself. Or better yet, create an about.me page where you can post all of your online content pages. These can help drive more traffic and gain more buzz for you, but at least you're giving your viewers a choice about that without wasting one single second of their time. Okay, number five, reiterate on the fly. This is a really good tactic to use while recording your screencast, and yes, it may actually prolong your recording time, but it will speed up everything else afterwards, including your production. Let me explain. If you find yourself stumbling or over-verbalizing during recording, then just do that sequence over again right from the beginning. Usually the second or third time around, the words that come out of your mouth will be more succinct with a better flow and ultimately easier to understand for the viewer. You can see here where I said the same thing because I knew I didn't get it right, but once in production, I saved the last best version and then placed my out marker here and went back to my last edit in the timeline and placed my in marker, then the delete key. Done. Hey, it takes much longer to go re-record something you weren't happy about than it is just to duplicate the sequence during the original recording. Okay, that's it for cutting the fat in your videos and I hope that helps you in your next ScreenFlow project. So if you like what you just watched, sign up for my free ScreenFlow tutorial series at combocasting.com. Take care, see you soon. Thanks for watching. Okay, thanks for, thanks for tuning in. Thanks for tuning in. Okay, so what, and viewers are you, and viewer, and vid, or even hint at, or, or if you even hint that you're going to be wasting their time, or if you even give hints, fuck's sakes, or if you even hint at, or, or if you even, or if you even hint at wasting their time, or if you even hint at wasting their time, no.